We're catching up with New York Giants offensive lineman Mark Lewinsky. He's going to tell us about the online growth, the Giants in year two under head coach Brian Dable, and a very special event he has coming up this weekend in his hometown of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. That's coming your way next here on the Locked On Giants podcast. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Chena. Happy to have you with us as we get closer to the start of New York Giants training camp. And speaking of New York Giants and training camp, I'm very, very happy to welcome in on the podcast, New York Giants offensive lineman, Mark Lewinsky. He is going to talk a little bit about the Giants, year two under Brian Dable, the expectations, the offensive line. And then a little later on in the program, stick around because he's going to tell us about a very special event he has planned in his hometown of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Mark, thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, Mark, let's jump right in. I want to just, before we get to year two, I know, you know, we want to look ahead, but I want to just go back a little bit real quickly here. When you have a brand new everything, coaches, system, new faces, you, of course, were were new to the Giants last year. Can you just talk about the learning curve? Is is it a case where, you know, maybe everybody's not playing and thinking as fastly, as quickly as they can? Or, you know, what was your take on year one? Um, I think we were trying to do our best to learn the system, and I think the coaches did a good job of um, trying to make everything as fast as possible. So we, everything that we did, it was at a high tempo. Um, we just kept working on these on the plays and uh, on all these concepts that we had at a really high pace so that we had to learn all these things as quick as possible, which I think uh, slowed everything down for us later as the season went along. I was going to say, was there a certain point that you can remember in the season where everything just, you felt like everything clicked and you didn't have to think as much? Yeah, I would say just a couple of games in. I know early on we had game plans to help us. Um, you know, maybe there was a little bit, there was a, a certain amount of plays that we had um, and stayed with those plays as much as we could and we practiced those plays. And then in practice, we were always working on new plays as we went along. Um, so, you know, there was a transition, but this year with the off season and everything, you can tell that there's a lot more emphasis on technique and fundamentals instead of just worrying about what play and which direction that we're going. You know, Mark, we hear the term culture thrown around a lot when it comes to football teams or sports teams in general. And I'm just wondering how much does working in a strong culture weigh into the outcome versus, say, one's own need to be competitive, to be great? <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, we have all that culture is there. We have, you know, previous greats that are always in the building to remind us of what the team has been and what it should be. Um, and we have a great fan base that lets us know when we're playing well and when we're playing bad. So um, we have all that behind us to um, to make sure that we're going in the right direction. What's something about Coach Dable that you've seen that maybe he has to show off into the fan base and to the public? Um, I feel like he shows a little, you know, most of what he's going on. Um, On Saturdays, he likes playing a lot of, uh, you know, older uh, rap uh, music and stuff like that. So you get a little bit of taste of that. Um, I don't know if that's shown or seen that much. Um, It's usually on the same day that he's wearing his J's that you might see pictures of. Um, So, you know, maybe listen to some 90s um, music as well. Has he surprised you? I mean, obviously, you know, you're coming to a new team last year. Dable's a new head coach. Did did he – was there anything about him that surprised you? Um, no, I think it was a lot of learning. Um, you know, you're able to see bits and pieces over the years, um, seeing him on TV and stuff with uh, being with the Bills. And, um, you know, you can see a little bits and pieces of that. I think he did a really good job of executing what we, you know, he was asked. You know, he had a game plan for us and we try to do our best and he didn't make it too much, didn't make it, you know, a little, you know, little bits of, um, you know, what we needed to do. He, he, he kept it in the middle range, not too high, not too low for us. 
is it fair to say that he's kind of found a balance between being a player's coach and being, you know, the hammer when he needs to be? Um, yeah, for the most part, sometimes there's a little bit where he gets on us. Um, and then, uh, you know, he needs to back off a little bit sometimes, but that's what you want. You want somebody that's going to, you know, push us and, and, uh, and he has a big expectation for us. So it's good to see that. All right. Now, as you know, Mark, Daniel Jones has kind of been a source of debate amongst giant fans. Can you talk about the growth that you've seen in him from the first day you met him to the last time you saw him? Yeah, I think most of it was just breaking free from just previous um, coaching and, and uh, time that he had in the past. Um, I think it, you know, it was just staying along um, and just chipping away um, and just working, you know, just keep working hard and, and making sure that he was putting the time in and, and to relax. I think that was the biggest thing was just him having the time to, to relax a little bit and just have fun out there instead of working worrying about so much about um, being, you know, so perfect. It was just go out there and having fun. To the casual observer, at the end of the day, football is mano a mano, man versus man. But obviously, you know, you take into consideration schemes and that sort of things. How is this scheme, do you think, a better fit, not just for Daniel, but for everybody, the offensive line, the skill position players? What is it about the scheme that you think really can make this team hum? Um, I think it's just us being consistent on what we're doing, not getting too far away from what um, we, we practice and uh, just focusing on the plays. You know, we we do, you know, we're doing all that we do in practice. It's not like we're just throwing something new out there. I think it's just consistency and just keep working hard and, and executing those plays in practice to go up for game day. How much different do you anticipate the offense being in year two, other than obviously playing a little bit faster than it was last year? Um, I think there will be the ability to have a few more plays um, added that we've been working on that maybe we haven't shown um, now that we feel more comfortable and that we might have the right guys um, that we just feel comfortable running the plays as well. But I think it just can be more emphasis. You know, we've we've gone over these plays a million times. Maybe it's just more of the communication fundamentals and technique of it instead of it just being you know we were just putting them in and and figuring them out last year now we can go about um being more comfortable and seeing more fronts um in front of the plays that we have now all right now this next question kind of pains me to ask but i gotta ask it it's early but the philadelphia eagles still appears to be the cream of the crop in the division as of now that could change obviously that being said when you look at the moves that have been made internally with the Giants, the plays that you know are coming, the philosophy changes and whatnot, how much do you feel the Giants have closed the gap with the defending conference champions? Um, at the end of the day, it's just making sure that we execute the plays that we're doing at the high level. So I think this camp, we got to make sure that we're, going, we're playing fast and everything that we're doing is hard. So that when we're in these situations, when we're you know you're playing an elite team, that we can execute these plays. Um, you know, we're just going to work as hard as we can during this uh, training camp and and as the season goes along, and be ready for the teams and the games that we need. And speaking of the Eagles, you know, coaches will say the past is in the past. Let's live for the moment. But I got to think there are lessons to be learned from the past that you can take into the present. So I'm just kind of curious, how do you balance? not dwelling too much on the past, but taking those lessons and applying them towards the future. Yeah, I'm saying we're, we evaluate just like every week. We evaluate, you know, the good and the bad that we have. Um, you know, we might have a bad play. We're going to evaluate it the same as we do a good play. And we need to make sure that we're having that mindset going into, we know the good plays that we, you know, go against teams and, and plays that we either need to scrap them or we need to execute better. Um, I think that's going to be the mindset is just, you know, the next play every down, regardless of how good or bad a play is, we just need to execute. Hey, Giant fans, our partner at eBay Motors has teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. And if you're looking to make a smooth turn in fantasy football snake drafts, 
with the last pick in the first round and the first pick in the second round, you'll be guaranteed to have two of the surest performers by going all AFC West with Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams and Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes. Adams has proved that he remains a reliable top selection in Las Vegas, while Mahomes will again operate with both the highest floor and ceiling among the standout luxury options at his position. And Giant fans, if you're looking for a guaranteed fit for your vehicle, you need to check out eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure that it's the right fit for your car because eBay's guaranteed fit helps you understand exactly what parts you need for your vehicle. So go forth, switch gears, crank up the AC and say goodbye to sweating when your ride needs a little fixing up. Because with eBay's guaranteed fit, everything you need for your vehicle is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay's guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Giant fans, we are talking with Mark Lewinsky, New York Giants starting offensive lineman. He's got a special event coming up in his hometown of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania, which we're going to talk about in just a bit. But first, Mark, let's talk a little bit specifically about the Giants offensive line. And I've got to ask you about Bobby Johnson because he is such a, a character, at least with us. What is he like? And you know, what can you say about his teaching style? And more importantly, how has he helped you as a unit and you as an individual bring out the best of, in your game? Yeah, he finds a way to connect with us. Um, he knows how to uh, break up the room a little bit, keep it light at times. Um, and he also knows how to be honest. Uh, you know, he knows how to be honest with us. He knows what, you know, things that we need to improve on. Um, and, he, and he takes care of us in ways um, that we, you know, some weeks we may need something or, um, he makes sure that we're, uh, you know, it takes care of us really well. So it, there's, there's a lot of things that, um, you know, you need to do for an O-line. There's, you know, there's, there's five to six O-linemen on the field at the time. So it's making sure that he puts us in the right situation to uh, succeed every play. So he does a good job of making sure that we're not in bad situations, um, try to eliminate certain uh, plays that might put us in bad situations as well. All right, now I have a couple of questions from my subtext people, information of which, by the way, Giant fans, you can see in the show notes. Andrew C. came up with a really good one. He wanted to know, how do you feel about the structural growth of the O-line as compared to last season? Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is just us having the ability to get to know one another and all the little things that we do outside. Um, you know, if it's either, you know, how many times do we spend in the cafeteria with one another or little trips that we take or um, I think it's just, you know, we're, we're a fine knit group of, of uh, individuals and we have to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I think a lot of what we did, um, you know, initially it was just learning plays, but I think even within this off season alone, I think we've done a lot of things to kind of um, close the gaps and in, in different things, especially just getting to know one another. And, and uh, you know, when you get to know somebody a little bit better, you get to understand what their background is or, the people that you're fighting for, um, you know, their families and, you know, and all the things that are very important to somebody else. So that's, I think a lot of the things that we worked on, I think that will make us a better group. Now this next one from Ken P is actually a question I had, perhaps no position unit is more dependent on one another than an offensive line. So that being said, when you find yourself playing next to a rookie, you did last year with Evan on, on the, at right tackle Mm -hmm. This year, you know, if John Michael Schmitz wins the center position, he's a rookie. Can you just speak about the challenges of playing next to a rookie and what can you as a veteran do to help those guys along? Yeah, the biggest thing I can tell them is just uh, trust what's what's happening. Um, trust your coaches. Trust the guy next to you. Um, you know, don't don't second uh, have second judgments on things. Just go about the things that are asked of you. Um, you know, things are fast and. There's no time for, uh, you know, that little extra second of thinking. I think it's just going about executing and making sure that you're putting as much time into the game. 
And this is a question that I received from a couple of listeners who were curious, and I'm kind of curious about this as well, but how much of a different or adjustment is there with regards to blocking schemes and timing, depending on who the running back is in the running game? Um, I think a lot of it is the running back um, learning and kind of having a feel for what the line does as well. I don't think it's just, you know, the running back because he, they have to understand and, and they, if, you know, the good running backs um, set up the blocks for us. So they make our job a lot easier. So, um, you know, we can go out there, run and run into guys, but those guys at the end of the day, they can bring the guys to us. Um, that's where you can see the difference between, you know, a good running back and a great running back is having the ability to set up their blocks for them and, and being able to see the big picture. Continuity is preferred usually on an offensive line because of the nonverbal communication aspect of it, in addition to the verbal. That said, you're always going to have injuries, unfortunately. There's going to be things that come up that ruin the continuity, and you might not be playing next to the same guy that you thought you would be playing mm -hmm. next to. So that being said, for the nonverbal aspect of it, what's the key to expediting that process so that the communication is smooth and you don't have any hiccups on game day. Yeah, I think that's making sure that when we're in the classroom and we're spending time watching film that we're all talking and, and speaking the same language. You know, sometimes when we get away from uh, explaining things a certain way in the room, we kind of bring it back and say, hey, this is the way that we, we talk and speak and the way that we go about stepping and moving. So I think, um, you know, everybody in that in that room needs to pay attention to what what's going on. Even if you're, you know, you're in the back of the room um, that you're listening to the the guys in front of you, because that's how it's going to go on on game day. So I think it's just making sure that everybody in the room's on the same page, and it's just not the, you know, five to six guys that are playing in the game. It's everybody making sure that when their time comes, because it can happen at any time, that they're ready and and are listening throughout the week. How does the communication in the classroom work, though? Do you guys have an opportunity to chime in on what's, as to what you're seeing on film, or is it just Coach Johnson talking and you guys listening? Um, there's there's a little bit of everything, depending on the week. Um, but for the most part, um, Bobby does a great job of not only talking to the front line, he, you know, even the second guys, and then randomly he'll just pick somebody um, – random just to ask, you, might, you know, it might be a, a question about the center, but he, you know, you might ask a tackle, Hey, what is the center doing on this play? Just so that everybody's on the same page and understanding that because they, they might, you might get caught up in the thing that, yeah, I'm just playing guard or I'm playing tackle. Well, there might be a game where it, there might be multiple people. They need to move spots just because of guys that may have got injured or, you know, limitations that happen. So it's making sure everybody knows what's going on. Now, what about you personally? Because if you're like every other athlete I've ever spoken with, you're probably never really satisfied with your game. You, you probably feel like there are areas that you can improve on. So when you look back at your first year at the Giants, where do you feel you took you know, a, a significant step forward? And where do you feel you still have to get to in order to get to the level you want to play or know you can play at? Yeah, I think it's just being um, as when at the end of the day, it's always being as consistent as possible. Uh, making sure that the plays that um, you execute one week that you do it the next week. Um, Cause there's times that you get, you know, you might be tired or things uh, pop up. It's just making sure that you overcome a lot of things. Um, you know, it, you can always be improved in uh, communication as well. Uh, making sure that every play and every down that you have the same amount of communication and not just expect that the, the guy maybe heard you or stuff like that. So you're just making sure that there's that continuous loop of, inf you know, just making sure all the information is going along. And I'm not saying use this as an excuse, but I am curious about, you know, the fact that you came over to a new team, you moved to a new city. It was basically an upheaval of your life. How much does that initially play into getting settled with a team, getting settled with what you have to do, the playbook, everything really changes so how much do you think that was a factor for you personally? Um, I think I try to do my best in the off season to understand and, and understand the playbook. So I think a lot of it just coming down to, you know, just learning the little different uh, terminologies and different things. Cause at the end of the day, football is football. It's just making sure that you can kind of erase a lot of things that you had in the past. Cause there's, 
plays that have totally different meaning for a word or a, a term or, you know, the way that you go about things. So it's um, doing a great job of reminding yourself uh, day in and day out that, you know, the past is in the past and you got to keep moving forward and there's going to be new things that happen. You know, there's always a, you know, there's always new plays that come up as well. And it's like, oh, this was a, this is what a play used to be, you know, however many years ago I was on another team. It's like, how do I forget, completely forget about that? Cause it's a whole new play. So I think it's just making sure they have a clean slate week to week, especially when you get through the season, cause there's going to be new defenses you go against new numbers. Um, so it's trying to eliminate all the numbers that you, you know, there might be linebacker numbers or defense alignment numbers that were in front of you and what they did. So just making sure that you have a clean slate every week. And Mark, before we get to your football can, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Bobby Okereke, um, a, a former teammate of yours on the Colts, but also a new teammate now. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about him? Because, I mean, you will be practicing against him. You have been. What, what does he bring to the defense? Yeah, he's going to bring a lot of athleticism, and he's a great leader. Um, he knows how to work and practice, and, and he knows how to bring it on game day. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to practice against him for a couple of years. We always had, you know, little battles, even if it was, you know, how we, how we went and attacked one another and, and things. Um, so I had the ability to work with him, and he always knew how to um, adjust and not be caught up in one way. He knew how to um, make sure that he was getting to the place that he needed to be. Hey, Giant fans, with training camp about to begin and with the NFL season not too far behind, there's no better time than now to check out the Locked on Giants subtext community program. This exclusive community allows me to communicate directly with participants, both in terms of group broadcasts and one-on-one -on -one texting. Members get exclusive items from me, including observations that I don't put out on my social media accounts and other goodies, such as... When available, the chance to submit questions to select special guests that appear on the Lockdown Giants podcast. Details on how to sign up can be found in the show notes, and it's free to try for 14 days. And if you like it, do nothing and you'll be billed $4.99 per month after your trial period ends. There's no long-term commitments. Cancel at any time once your billing starts. And if during the trial period you decide it's not for you, just simply text STOP to opt out of the list before your 14 day trial period ends and you'll owe nothing. I can't think of a better way to connect on a regular basis with Locked On Giants listeners. And I hope you'll give the subtext community a try. Again, you can find details in the show notes. So check it out, sign up, and I hope to see you on the Locked On Giants subtext community. All right, and Giant fans, we are speaking with Mark Lewinsky of the New York Giants. If he is, of course, projected as a starting offensive lineman. You don't want to say definite because, you know, still got to compete like everything else. Anyway, Mark has a football camp that he is going to be conducting this weekend on Sunday, I believe, July 23rd at, in his hometown of Wilkes Bar. And um, Mark, let's, and by the way, folks, you can see, those of you watching on YouTube, you can see the information where you can find more information on the football camp. It's at marklewinskyfootballcamp.com. Mark, let's talk a little bit about the camp and kind of, you know, just the whole idea of giving back, if we could here. As a youth, you probably attended football camps when you were growing up. Can you just talk a little bit about how those camps shaped you personally, not just as a football player, but as, you know, a, a developing young man? Yeah, um, so all these camps that you go to, the, the best camps that I've ever gone to were the ones that had a little bit of uh, life information in them. Um, if it was just, you know, even if it was in with, you know, football, uh, you know, what, what, to be, what to expect in the classroom or the things that you needed to do to make sure that you succeeded later on in life. Um, I think those were always the camps that, um, you know, I always felt the best at because I was always learning something, something that would help me along the way. Um, so that's the things that I try to ingrained in, in the guys in between drills or, you know, if they are, they're asking questions, um, it always goes back to what they're doing in their community, what they're doing um, in the classroom, how they're treating others, um, you know, making sure that they know what all the resources that are available to them, especially 
you know, in, in places where you might not think that there's that many opportunities, but there's always relationships that you can build that maybe open opportunities for you down the road. So those are a lot of the things that I talk about in these camps. But what, you know, other than fundamentals and technique and, and running around, I, I try not to uh, bury the kids and make them feel tired, but, you know, I, I make sure that they have a grasp of um, fundamentals, technique, and, and go about a lot of uh, life situations. Do you have a core message that you are planning to deliver to the campers this weekend? Yeah, I think it's just making sure that, you know, regardless of the situation that you might be in, there's always a brighter side. So, you know, um, the future always holds more than maybe all the situations ever in your past. So it's making sure that you're working hard every day and, and work on your uh, just your life in general. Now, what else do you have in store for the campers and who are some of the guest coaches? I, I guess maybe some teammates or whatnot, but who are some of the coaches that you have invited to participate? Yeah, so I, I always make sure to have um, all the people that, you know, got me to the point that I'm at. Um, we have all the Wilkes-Barre area, um, you know, the school district that coaches. Uh, Tony Khalifi was my uh, head coach when I was at GER Memorial, um, which they combined uh, the three schools for Wilkes-Barre now. So GER, Coughlin, and Myers. Um, but, you know, there's going to be uh, all the Wilkes-Barre area guys. Um, I went to Lackawanna Junior College, which is in Scranton, Pennsylvania. There's going to be um, the coaching staff from there. And then there's some, uh, you know, there's always uh, local uh, legends. Um, you know, last year we had Ronnie Salt. Mark Duda is the coach at uh, Lackawanna. He played in the NFL. Um, you know, you have Greg Skrepnik, which was, you know, a, a big guy that uh, was a GER guy that was drafted high and played a long time as well. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of guys that I played with at Lackawanna and, you uh, in high school time, that'll be there as well. Mark, some guys, when they, you know, get older and, and advance in their career, they they like to either maintain ties with their past or just sever it and just move on. Why is it so important to you that, that you feel the need to maintain ties with your community? Yeah, I think that's very important, um, especially, um, you know, those are all the people that help me get to where I'm at. So... <laughs> And just uh, let them out to dry, but um, you know that it, you got to keep make sure the community is 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 thriving and and going along. So doing camps like that brings people together and brings you know this group of uh, youth football guys together, and they they have the ability to help out with the community. Um, you know, because the things that we teach them are going to spread throughout uh, the area. Do you have a fond memory that that just kind of stands out from your days? growing up in Wilkes, in the wilkes Bar area? Yeah, um, you know, just the um, the days of, you know, walking to school, um, all the people that you encounter, um, you know, those fun summers, um, you know, um, those football days that you have with your, you know, all the guys that you grew up with from elementary school. And, uh, you know, those are always the funnest moments that you'll have. Um, you know, I've you know, I've got the ability to play for different two different college football teams. You know, this is my third NFL team, but there's something that you, you can't uh, describe the feeling that you have with all those uh, guys that you grew up all the way from, you know, it can be kindergarten to 12th grade, um, just having the ability to play with those guys. So when that last game comes, you know, there's something different that happens and that feeling you'll never get back under those Friday night lights. And then finally, Mark, you know, unfortunately, some people might be watching this podcast and want to attend the camp, but they're not geographically located in the wilkes Bar area. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to kind of just share a message, if you will, to any young people who might be watching this, who might aspire to play football. What would you like to tell them? Yeah, most, most of the, what this camp is all about is um, bringing, you know, maybe some technique back to um, – your team. But at the end of the day, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is, is a, a lot of things that deal with just making sure that you're listening, um, focusing, um, and a lot of technique wise. So um, even if you're not at the camp, when you're back, you know, when you're at your football camp, when you're, you know, with your team, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is making sure that you're listening to coach. Um, he might be giving you little coaching points that are going to help you become better. Um, so those are a lot of things that I've talk about and break down 
Um, it's just having the other, the ability of somebody else tell you, because we have guys that have been in that situation and we've been coached that way. So I'm going to coach and, and say these things, you know, exactly the way the coach is going to say. So this is just the ability um, to hear from someone else. And uh, that's what it really comes down to. All right, Mark, I appreciate you coming on. He is Mark Lewinsky. Um, I almost said starting, but presumed starting offensive lineman for the New York Giants. Still got to compete. We can't take anything for granted here. For more information on Mark's youth football camp, admission of which is free, according to the website, the camp is on July 23rd, which is this weekend, Sunday. Great way to kind of end your summer before you have to go into the long grind of training camp and, and the season. But you can find more information about the camp at Mark. LewinskyFootballCamp.com. Those of you who are listening on uh, our audio platforms, I'll have that information for you in the show notes. Mark, thank you so much for coming on with me. Best of luck to you in the coming season. And uh, thank you for answering the questions submitted by our subtext community, as well as my questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate you. All right, Giant fans, that's going to do it for this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast. We will see you again next week. For more, as the New York Giants get ready for training camp. For Mark Lewinsky, I'm Patricia Trainer. Have a great weekend, Giant fans.